Hello, welcome to another reading or teaching, I guess, series. Uh, bite sized pieces. BPD and bite sized pieces. Borderline personality disorder. This is number six in the series. And we're going to start talking about who is in control, what you can and cannot do. You have a right to your beliefs, thoughts, feelings, opinions, and so does every other person. You need to know yourself, live out your values, and tell people your needs, wants, boundaries, and limits. If you confront a person with BPD, expect denial. They would rather lose you, their job, their family, and friends than to lose themselves by admitting flawed actions. Make sure you keep a written record of the behavior of the borderline person. Note the patterns in their mood changes and their actions. Learn from their behaviors. Don't react to them. It's very difficult to do, by the way. Find out what triggers they have. Is it mood? Is it stress? Is it time? Uh, addictions? Hunger? Tiredness? The environment around them? Documenting this will help you to be forewarned and prepared of the next borderline reaction or overreaction. Here are some non-borderline people triggers. So if you don't have borderline personality disorder, here are some triggers that can get to you. If you're accused falsely by the person with BPD, the borderline person diminishing your feelings, your needs, and your reactions, setting up of excessive flattery towards you by the borderline before they're going to devalue you, things that alert you to upcoming torment and lash outs. There's something called FOG, and it's very popular actually on the internet, or it was back in the day. FOG stands for fear, obligation, and guilt. Losing money, kids, relationships, or approval is one part of F in FOG, or a borderline. After all I've done for you, you owe me. That's the obligation part of borderline personality disorder. How they feel that you owe them something because they've done everything for you. Whether they have or haven't. And maybe they have done a lot for you. But requiring you to owe them for it is just wrong. G, guilt. You did this or you said that to hurt or punish or lash out at me. That's the guilt trip. Coping. Self-care, therapy, classes to improve finances. And to help you leave the borderline person sometimes. Um, some reality checks. Ask other people if what the borderline is saying about you is true. Remove yourself from the abuser's presence. Let the borderline own his or her own behavior and consequences of that behavior. Don't react where a borderline person sees you reacting. Don't let them know that they're pushing your buttons. Again, very difficult. To do that. Boundaries. What I deserve and don't deserve. It's hard for a borderline personality person to know where he or she ends and others begin. So a non-borderline person needs to set boundaries and limits. Flexible limits are okay, but people can violate those limits. It's okay to forgive a borderline, but be careful that forgiveness does not mean acceptance of the behavior. Firm limits mean sometimes you can be a little bit too firm and can appear cold. Don't hold grudges, block, or ban, or reject somebody with borderline personality disorder, but do set limits and do distance yourself if you must. If you're too flexible, you can take on other people's feelings and responsibilities. If you're too positive, you can't allow yourself to feel negative emotions sometimes. So you want to have a balance of flexibility and firmness. If you're too firm, you may seem cold and hardened to emotions. Um, you need to have a healthy emotional barrier. What this looks like is understanding your own personal feelings, having self-respect, saying no and no more as needed, saying yes when you choose. And I wanted to read you something on this note. Hang on just a second. I'm going to grab this book over here. And I'm going to read you Roberta and Kathy's story because it's very telling about this whole thing that we're just talking about. Just a minute. Should have marked it in my book, and I didn't. Sorry about that. Uh, let's 
see. We may have to come back to Roberta's and Kathy's story. There we go. Roberta's friend will say, Kathy hates it when Roberta goes out with friends. Kathy's always invited along, but she wants to stay home because she thinks that Roberta's friends are a complete waste of time. Please don't go, Kathy pleads one evening as Roberta gets dressed to go out. I'm lonely without you, Kathy says tearfully. Roberta gently reminds Kathy that she told her about her plans a week ago and that Kathy had time to find things to do on her own or with one of her own friends. But Kathy just keeps on weeping. You must love, not love me anymore, she says. Roberta replies, it sounds like you feel I'm rejecting or abandoning you. That must be very painful. You can believe that and make yourself feel bad. Or you can try to work through why you doubt my love for you. Let's talk about it when I get back. I'll see you around 11 o'clock. That's how you handle an emotional um, borderline personality person when they are having that fear of abandonment and they're trying to guilt you. You don't love me anymore. Um, that kind of thing. I'm lonely without you, making you feel guilty because you're leaving them. You just tell them, hey, this is the boundary. I told you to go find yourself some friends for tonight. I was going out with my friends. When I come back, we'll talk, okay? By the way, that was taken from Stop Walking on Eggshells, second edition, by Paul T. Mason, MS, and Randy Krieger. And that copyright is 2010 by Paul T. Mason and Randy Krieger. All right, next. What is a healthy sense of self? Because in order to handle... Being around somebody that has these disorders, you need to have a healthy sense of self. Okay. First, let's talk about an unhealthy sense of self. Um, lacking self-identity and understanding of yourself. Confusion between your beliefs and feelings versus another person's. Taking on another person's problems and responsibilities as your own. Taking on someone's identity or a role, such as becoming like their mother or somebody in charge of them, bossing them around, controlling them, or becoming BPD or exhibiting BPD traits yourself. Okay. Um, people with an, unhel an unhealthy sense of self feel helpless and they often put up with maltreatment from other people. A healthy sense of self means that you know yourself as separate from other people. You identify and take responsibility for your own feelings and values. You embrace your feelings as acceptable and other people's feelings as acceptable. You honor other people's feelings and beliefs, even if they're different from yours. You don't flip-flop the rules. You don't behave impulsively. You don't insist that people do everything the way you want it when you want it done. And you don't treat people like puppets to toy with. People with a healthy sense of self know that they can choose the behavior of others that is directed at them. So in other words, if you're with a toxic person, you know if you have a healthy sense of self. You don't have to remain with that toxic person. You don't deserve it. And you don't have to stay stuck in that situation. So that's just a little bit more about how to stop walking on eggshells. Um, here's a little tiny bit more. So page 115 of this same book, Stop Walking on Eggshells, by Paul T. Mason, M.S. and Randy Krieger, copyright 2010. On page 115, I'm going to read you something really interesting about relationship. Okay, so Khalil... Gilbron, or G Gibron, sorry, there's a book called The Prophet, copyright 1976. In the passage on marriage, Gibron urges couples to have spaces in their togetherness. This goes for any type of one-on-one -on -one relationship. Stand together, yet not too near together. For the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cy cypress grow not in each other's shadow. Gibron is describing healthy limits. The opposite enmeshment is comparable to the oak tree and the cypress growing so close together that their branches and roots become entwined. Soon there's no room for either tree to grow. Parts of each tree die, and neither reaches its full potential. 
I think that's awesome. And there's a little excerpt here too. Unlike compromise, which is a conscious give and take, enmeshment involves denying who you are or what you need to please someone else. We talk about one more thing and then we're done on this uh, series number six of the BPD and bite size pieces. So there's two types of parenting. There's parenting without limits and there's parenting with limits. If a child is taught to depend on a parent to tell them their preferences, their thoughts, their favorite foods, their beliefs, their decisions, every move they make, the parent tells them what to do. Then as an adult, that child grows up and they may need someone else to make them whole. They may need somebody to make their decisions for them, to direct them constantly. They may need that one specific person that's always there telling them what to do, bossing them around. If they were abandoned by their parents, it's very difficult as an adult to connect with other people. If they were controlled by their parents, then they tend to violate other people's rights as theirs were violated. If they were with the product of smothering parents, like people that just constantly hovered and told them that what they were doing was wrong and, oh, you don't want to do that, that kind of thing, then that person grows up to sometimes lack their own identity. So that's just some of the, unfortunately, harmful things of being raised by a parent that is dysfunctional and either mother loves you or tries to control you, tries to guilt you, whatever. It's going to affect your life as an adult. And it's important when you see people that are affected as adults that are acting erratically and in strange ways that you realize it's probably a product of their upbringing many times, very often a product of their upbringing. So hopefully that gave you some insight a little bit more insight into what it's like to stop walking on eggshells and what it looks like to be walking on eggshells. And I hope you'll tune in for the next sharing of this uh, series. This was number six. Next will be seven. So we will see you on number seven. Thanks for watching and enjoy. Have a great day.